Are you sick of those damn political crusaders? The anti-libertarian libertarian party? Sick of the violence and coercion that makes up the status servile society with seemingly no escape? Are you looking for real practical solutions to increase your personal freedom and your invulnerability to coercion? If so, kick off your shoes, come inside the polyethylene A-tent, and let's talk Vanu. Join your hosts, Shane and Kyle, as they further explore this freedom strategy and develop it into the modern day. You're listening to the Vanu Podcast. And welcome to the Bonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane Ann. I'm Jason. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Bonnie. There are obviously a bunch of great titles on there, but I'd recommend Going Mobile, a terrific Vanuan band live scene from the 1960s, narrated by yours truly. Features some incredible articles by Rayo and tons of great insights uh, from those living Vani back in the uh, 1960s and 1970s. Again, that link is audibletrial.com forward slash Vani. Today we've got another very special unplanned live episode of the podcast streaming live on DLive. It's great to have you here. Uh, feel free to drop any questions in the chat room, share the stream around, and please consider uh, upvoting this post. Uh, we certainly do appreciate it. Uh, joining me is uh, uh, Phoenix Aurora. Uh, Andrew Marich and obviously my co-host Jason Booth and uh, Jeremy Hangeller will be with us here shortly. Uh, you know, considering uh, uh, you know the title of this episode, um, you know he is uh, uh, you know he's currently traveling to a destination right now, and he will join us here shortly. Uh, so uh, welcome, guys. Uh, how, how are you doing on this uh, fine, fine Saturday afternoon? Pretty good. Good. Oh, very well. <laughs> pretty hot. <laughs> pretty hot in the back of the van, but. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and and Phoenix, yeah, Phoenix, our uh, I guess our, our second uh, guest uh, van nomad this evening. But uh, Jason, what's new since uh, since we live streamed yesterday? Well, since yesterday, well, nothing really. It's it's the same. <laughs> it's just it's just like what twenty four hours later. Yeah. <laughs> really, all the way. Yeah, not not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of change. So. No, uh, not not a day. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right, so uh, I went ahead and titled this episode "A Tale of A Tale of Two Van Nomads," but I think our discussion—I uh, don't think our discussion will be limited to that. Uh, so yeah, we'll spend some time discussing Jeremy and Phoenix's adventures with their pursuit of van nomadism, and uh, after that, I'm not really sure. We'll have to see. Got uh, some great folks on this call, so uh, we'll just have to see uh, where the conversation goes. So, uh, so I guess uh, Bodie or uh, Andrew—I don't know which one you prefer to go by nowadays—but uh, uh, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about uh, uh, what you do, since uh, you know my uh, the TVP listeners might not be familiar with you. You there, man? You guys hear me? I hear you. Okay. Yeah, I, don't know yeah, I got you. you. Okay. <laughs> Maybe some technical difficulties on the uh, on the live stream. Possibly. Okay. Well. Uh, anyways. No, I'm I'm watching the live stream. It looks fine. Okay. He said his audio just dropped. All right. I don't well, Okay, well, that's, that's unfortunate. Anyways, anyways, I guess we'll move on to uh, to you, Phoenix. I guess tell the listeners, uh, well, actually, the Vani listeners uh, are familiar with you, uh, as uh, we inter- uh, Jeremy and I had a chat with you from the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. So I guess for, for our new listeners, why don't you tell them a little bit, a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're doing? Well, I'm a freedom seeker, all-around liberty lover, and a black flag anarchist. I you know, kind of re- like to respect labels and all that collective crap and uh been aware of everything that's well not everything but my my you know i I guess i can say i got awoke um back in uh, 2014 when i was in the marine corps ironically from the zeitgeist movement and alex jones figure (laughs) um spent two years following you know their rabbit holes and Drinking all of Alex Jones's, you know, fear Kool Aid. The tangy and, tangerine. Uh, finally found a free talk 
alive and the uh, Free State Project and all that. And spent about four months up there hanging out with those folks. Delicious. <laughs> I haven't got one of their shirts still. Yeah. Um, spent, spent some time with the uh, Free State Project people. Had to come back because I got two daughters. Um, so I came back to Aurora. I've been staying in the communist states of Illinois for, it uh, seems like far too long, but um, found your podcast through uh, a, a mutual friend of ours, Tisa Moff, and uh, I devoured literally everything I could, and uh, recently got evicted because my roommate, well, things went sour, <laughs> and I uh, decided I'd uh, you know, do a shotgun van nomadism. Hell yeah. Very good, very good, and uh, yeah, it's always uh, always great to hear um, people, you know, enjoy the podcast and all. Uh, it's obviously why we why we uh, go out and do it. But uh, looks like uh, um, Bodie, Andrew, whatever you want to be called. I don't know what uh, what your uh, what your preference is, but uh, do we have your audio? Uh, it doesn't. Yes, I do. Okay, great. great. Just had to un- I just had to unplug it and plug it back in. Cool, cool. So why don't you tell the listeners a little a little bit about you and your work? Um, I do all sorts of crazy stuff. Most of the stuff I focus on. Uh, my favorite things are debunking conspiracies. I'm the opposite of a tinfoil hat. Uh, I get accused a lot of being really like naive in that sense, but I've actually I try to look into a, all the forces going into all these things that we see, and I really think the vast majority of it comes from the self and and how we choose to interact with our environment. So interesting. That's mm. it, I I become hated quite quickly. Because I just deny everything. I just think it's a, <laughs> there's something we can, there's always something you can do. There's always a choice you can make, um, and that's kind of what I explore with my with my designs and some of the videos I try to do and put out there just to generate conversation, get people talking about the the status quo and why it's weird. Yeah, and you're a commie too, right? I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been called I've been called commie so much. Oh my god, I'm the hidden commie. I'm the hidden commie. I don't believe in. I don't actually believe in property. That's kind of that's kind of like like an anarcho merit badge, isn't it? Right, being called right. a commie. It is. It's yeah. just the same. Yeah, just uh, also being called a Nazi. Or Nazi, yeah. Uh... One of the two. Or un- gotta... un- unpatriotic. That's that's my favorite my favorite oh, thing to be called. That's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you might uh, you might find when some. Uh... They'll call you. A... Oh, God, Phoenix. They'll call you a fascist on. They'll call you a fascist in on, on one side of the mouth, and then they'll call you a, a liberal cunt on the other side of the mouth. It makes no sense. They don't even know what we are. <laughs> no, they, they, no, no, they can't place it. Right, right. As Cody Wilson said in, uh, in one of his recent interviews, uh, you know, we're from a different planet than them. Um, so yeah, they don't they don't understand uh, our perspectives on, on on these sorts of things. Uh, they uh, <laughs> they definitely don't. But uh, I guess Bodie, I, I'd I'd put point in the direction. Uh, Rayo had some interesting views on on. Uh, I, I know he, I'm pretty sure he believed in the notion of private property, but his his kind of take on it was um, like like here in the United States, um, there's no way to return land to their rightful owners. I mean, all of the land right. in the entire world has been expropriated from someone in the past. So how the hell are you going to track down all of the ancestors? Um, I mean, no matter no matter which way you cut it, um, I mean, someone's rights are going to be violated. Um, like, there, there's there's no way to, to actually go about it without without that happening. So um, he had, a, I think, one of them was titled uh, Ethical Land Use, and um, the other one, oh, I'm trying to remember. Maybe, maybe he only wrote one article on that, and we just did two episodes on it. Uh, yeah, probably, probably. But he, he had some interesting, uh, interesting perspectives. I mean, he did squat. Um, I mean, he did trespass when he was, you know, pursuing wilderness fauna and van nomadism. I mean, public, public and right. private lands. Uh, you know, he trespassed on. You know, just. You don't really there. have. You don't always have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the paradigm we're in. That's. It's it's crappy. That's why the the whole idea of property and and how do you actually get things to the rightful owners? I I just don't think there are rightful owners. And that means it, and that doesn't mean necessarily oh I can take everything. It's more of like a thing of respect. Like okay, I don't really belong here. <laughs> no matter where I am, and I don't own this place. Um, yeah, you need to you need to go back and listen to our interview with uh, uh Carl Ingram. He's a, a van nomad down there in Australia, and he has the same sort of philosophy. Mm-hmm. He really, he really cool. like talking. The guy, like the the guy, surfs five days a week and works oh. like three half three half days a week. Yeah, and man, lives, he rides and lives, the waves and lives in a van with his girlfriend. And when he's not doing that, like he rides mountain bikes, and and just travels. And it's just like he, 
he lives in Australia, like that's where he's based. And then right mm-hmm. now they're in uh, like Eastern Europe on on a tour, and they're like posting pictures for Romania and stuff. It's that's dope. fantastic. Wow. Yeah. The, see, that's just living. That's that's, that's living. That's, that's what he does. Living. Uh, yeah. There's no there's no real plan to it. It's just doing what you want to do where you are, and just not being a dick about it. Right, yeah, and, and and something that they that him and uh, Jala, his uh, f- I guess free mate, I don't know what he what he'd call her girlfriend, whatever. Um, <laughs> the they're what they what they tend to do, um, and what they are really big on is if they if they stay on a piece of land uh, or if they stay somewhere, they try to make it better than than it mm-hmm. was when they got there. Um, so right. um, I, I I don't know I obviously there's some differences there. Um, I, I think there's some some minor differences on on uh, you know free markets and property rights, but um, something that's is something I've had to do over the past year. So not that I've had to, but it's kind of been an evolution of sorts. Um, yeah, I used to be a couple of years ago the. Uh, the, the ANCAP that would just basically go around calling people communists and it didn't work too well for me. It just, it just didn't work too well. So uh, when, it, when it comes to direct action in VANU, uh, I find that uh, even if there's uh, differing economic perspectives, um, as long as they're not uh, you know, begging government to violate my, my autonomy, then uh, if they're mm-hmm. taking the issue of themselves, then I, you know, those minor differences don't really make, make, make too, make, or aren't really too big of a deal. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. One, one, of the, one of the things Shannon and I agreed on is we would much rather have Carl hanging out in our backyard than than some of these end caps that we deal with on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, that mm-hmm. sounds reasonable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's he's a good dude. For sure, for sure. And it's about time to have him back on again. But uh, you know, they 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 parked the van for uh, I guess a few months, and now they're just traveling across Europe in a in a mm-hmm. different converted vehicle that they rented or purchased. So it's a hell of a life. Uh, it's definitely a hell of a life. But it's uh, it's not uh, it's not unrealistic. It's really not. The van nomad life is uh, rather cheap. And uh, you know, as we'll, we'll kind of find out here as we as we talk to Phoenix and uh, get a get a gauge on on, on what uh, what exactly he's doing. So so Phoenix, you said that uh, you had a disagreement with your roommate. You ended up getting evicted, and uh, you decided to do the uh, the shotgun. Uh, Van Nomad thing, um, I guess. Um, what uh, I guess uh, we'll start with. Uh, how has it been so far? It's been uh, what a couple weeks. Uh, tell us a bit about your experiences. Yeah, I've been going uh, going pretty strong for a couple. Yeah, about two and a half weeks now. And the the biggest thing um, that I think made it easy for me is I'm a very um, I'm very outspoken about my anarchistic views and so forth, especially to my employers. Um, and so they're, they're comfortable with it. They're, you know, it doesn't, they don't like, they're not like, Oh my God, what, really? Like it's not out of a, out of, out of left field. And so I was able to, you know, ask both of them, you know, do you guys mind if I slay, stay the you know, sleep in the parking lot? And they both were like, yeah, absolutely. That's fine. And they're both pretty, pretty well stealthy. The, um, the cabinet shop that I work at, uh, the parking lot's right in the back and uh, you can't really see it from the road, uh, from anywhere. The only the only thing that I'm worried about with that is if I go there too often, maybe the neighbors will you know, see me pulling in at like you know nine ten o'clock at night. They might call the bludgies, and then I got a problem. Mm-hmm. The bar that I work at, um, that one is super stealth. There's a uh, the parking lot is not finished all the way back to the fence, so there's about thirty feet, maybe probably like sixty feet of um, just grassy area, and they've got a semi tractor parked on like the far left side but there's a little alcove to the left of it and i parked right back there and nobody could see me it's wonderful yeah that's, nice. good. that's good to hear so you're, you're doing the permission you're going the permission parking route which is um definitely uh you know definitely definitely a good route i've, I've had I've, heard, I've read recommendations of uh like especially for mechanic shops where there are vehicles parked there overnight uh you know if another vehicle's there as long as you're stealthy about it they won't notice but you got to pull in after everyone leaves and leave before they get there so um the route that you're going uh, seems to be a, a definitely a more beneficial, yeah, per, per, definitely uh, you know with permission. But uh, but yeah, as far as the neighbors, if they don't, uh, you know, yeah, people tend to be a, a little nosy. I guess that's that's okay sometimes, right? Um, if they see something suspicious and they you know and they're they and they're worried about it, you know, that's it's nice to have someone like that. But at the same time, um, not in your situation if. Uh, you know, you're there with permission, and then you get harassed by the bludgie. So um, that's it's good to hear. So you haven't had any problems uh, finding places to stay. Then uh, have you have you ventured out uh, from those two locations? Like, have you tried to uh, sleep at a Walmart parking lot or Planet Fitness or anything like that? Not yet. I haven't really found the need. I've slept in front of um, my kid's house a couple times. Um, baby mama and the family is all cool with it. So um, that helps. You know, that's street side parking. Um, but that was that was pretty easy. Uh, the the neighborhood there is super used to my vehicle though because they've been there. I've been coming there for 20 years, and um, I actually got this vehicle off of her. So it's not like 
where's this car coming from? It's not a huge sprinter van that I uh, that just shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. What 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 vehicle are you using? Dodge Durango. Oh, nice. Yeah, and yeah, you've the only been problem, uh, the, good. The outlets, the outlets in the back don't work. The uh, the cigarette outlets. So I'm thinking about wiring some type of DC switch straight from the main battery, just so I can park, so just so I can plug something else in. Because I've got a solar charger that I use for the phone. Um, I don't really ever use it. it. I don't really need to charge it only by solar. So like wherever, whenever, whenever I'm at work, I just charge it there. Um, so like the, the overall, as far as power goes. Um, the only thing that I would really need it for is for expanding, um, like a, a studio area. I would love to get my my mixer set up in here and all with all the mics and everything. Um, but as far as being in the Durango, that's really about it. Once I move up to a Sprinter van, I'll of course need it for, you know, the the water pump, the the stove, not so much the stove, but um, you know, the lights in there and probably a TV. Hmm. Okay, there's nice. not as many demands for power. Just. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess um, I, I noticed uh, on Fascist Book that uh, you have been, you had been doing, I guess, some some conversions to make it uh, more livable. Uh, you're taking out the seats and stuff. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was a pain in the butt. Um, <laughs> the uh, there was three different size bolts. Uh, I snapped one of them, uh, but overall, I, I got them all out and I put in a uh, a bed frame that just kind of it's level with the very back of the Durango. There's a little. I call it my garage. There's a little storage bunker in there, and so I can still access that. And then it just runs straight out to the end of the to the back of the the front seats, and it fits uh, you know me perfectly. I don't ever I'm I'm never feeling cramped in the slightest. I've got a little dresser to my right, and it's everything I need. The uh, the seats are actually sitting in my storage unit right now, so I'm planning on getting rid of the storage unit eventually once I sell off all the uh, all the extra needless belongings that I have. I got a bed, a dresser, I got a dart two dartboards in there, a whole bunch of just little knickknacks and stuff. Nice. So, but eventually that'll be gone too. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, you're you're getting everything uh, everything figured out. Uh, I guess the uh, well, I'm I'm curious uh, uh so do you plan on doing this uh, more long term or is this just kind of uh, I guess uh, an intermediary step uh, until you get a, a new apartment or, or a house or something like that. Or is it or are you not really sure and it's just kind of a day by day thing? I think I'm going to do it long term because, you know, the, the whole idea of Vanu, the whole idea of free, seeking freedom, because it's, oh my God, it's so free. It's, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about a landlord, neighbors, any, you know, if, if I have a problem with somebody, I'll just move. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. And so I think, I think I'm just going to go for the full on, you know, extra large wheelbase sprinter van build and live in that. I mean, I got, I've got two daughters. They're, they're excited to help me build it. And, uh, so I'm not really too too concerned about any of the stigma as far as family goes. Good deal. Yeah, that that make, that definitely makes it easier. So I guess um, I, I know you you uh, had a couple little uh, video series on on fascist book about uh, uh, one of one of the uh, one of the things that's a recommendation from all pretty much every band nomad I see on on uh, fascist tube is um, the uh, the Planet Fitness membership. Uh, you got to have a place to, uh, to to shower and stuff. Well, you don't necessarily have to. You can you know put that into your you can tr- add add that to your van or your build out. But uh, the Planet Fitness membership is a really sweet deal. Uh, it's a really sweet deal, and uh, I think you. Uh, uh, you had some some struggles getting uh, getting that set up. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, they they don't really like the unbanked, not at all. The only way that you can pay in cash is after you're already late, and then it's like an extra fifteen dollar charge. So I was forced to, well, not forced, but I chose to go get a bank account, and now I, all my information's out there and a nice little transaction history. So, but it's not like the government's not aware of it. I mean, all I got to do is look at my Facebook feed, so I'm not really hiding it much. Um, but the it do, it did have uh, result in me having to pay thirty three dollars a month for it instead of the twenty one for the black card um, because you know, the the type of bank account that I had to get would required a twelve dollar fee. So wow, okay. Yeah, that's that's, un- that's unfortunate to hear. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I was I wasn't sure. I I hadn't had to have have had to set up a plane of fitness account yet. But that's uh, mm-hmm. kind of unfortunate to hear. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's still way more affordable than you know. I'm, the least I paid at the apartment was sixty bucks a month for water. So it's mm-hmm. it's still cheaper. Right, right. Looks like Jeremy's here. I'm gonna 
end this call and then I'll get him added or Do you want me to, Do you want me to add him? Yeah, if you if you've got yeah, if you've got him got him handy. Yeah, I got him. Okay, cool. Yeah, if I would have answered that call, I would have hung up on you guys. So, oh shit. Skype recorder stopped. Uh -oh. All sorts of stuff happening now, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! There we go. Here's Jerry. Drones. Okay. So he's added. But, uh, all right, I guess we'll uh, we'll get back to Phoenix. Oh. Uh, oh, there he is. Jeremy, you there, man? Crap. Hello. Hello? Hello. I see Jason. Why can't I hear anything? I'm here. You hear me? That is strange. Nope, he can't hear me, apparently. Uh-oh. Okay, well, we can is hear he him. That's, that's half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There we go. Hello. Hello. Hey. Can you hear us? Hear us? Hey. hey, guys. What's up? Hey. Not much. You not sound much. really. Woo. You sound good. So well, uh, uh, I'm at a, I'm, a, I'm at a McDonald's somewhere near Williamsport, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so this should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. So so yeah, I guess this is uh, I guess the the the, the struggle of uh, being a van nomad and, and trying to uh, schedule live uh, discussions and such. So. Uh, sorry for the, uh, it was that and also Skype recorder stopped too. So yeah, sorry for the little technical difficulties there. But uh, but Jeremy, we were just finishing up with uh, with, with Phoenix's uh, little adventure. Um, but uh, I guess uh, Phoenix, would you recommend uh, this this lifestyle to uh, to to other people who are looking for an increase in personal freedom, or I guess trying to escape the uh, the nine to five survival society grind? If you have the means and the mental clarity and the actual drive to do it, absolutely. Um, if you're not if you're not completely tied down to you know a 30-year mortgage you have the ability to take much more control and responsibility of your life and you know that's that's pretty much what most that's why that's what I, I think that that's what causes the majority of trauma in in people's lives is not feeling like they have actual an actual say over what happens in their lives so um you know if you can if you can get out of there and uh, if you can get out of the, the idea that you need four walls and a roof to not be homeless then you know the sky's the limit you can literally do whatever you want yeah yeah i i certainly certainly agree so i guess is there uh, is there any other uh, any other advice you'd give to uh prospective van nomads or uh anyone i guess even just uh, i guess van nomad curious learn wiring learn mechanics um <laughs> buy a, a one of those little cube air conditioners because it gets hot as hell <laughs> especially if you have a dog <laughs> oh, How's oh, yeah. she doing, by the way? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know how well I'm coming in. It's telling me I have a bad connection, despite the fact that I seem to have perfect signal. You're coming in great, man. Yeah, you're you're, you're fine, Jeremy. Oh, uh, because you guys are sounding all choppy to me. Oh, murder dog's doing better. She, uh, her fever is gone. She seems to be on the mend. Still has a broken tooth, but you know, <laughs> we'll deal with that later. That's what happens when you're a NASCAR driver. I saw she was driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man oh man so uh so i guess we'll we'll switch over to uh to, to jeremy now i guess uh, our second uh tale or i guess uh, our second tale of a van nomad so uh so so jeremy you said you're uh you're in williamsport you're, you're currently parked are you going to be there uh, for the evening then no no i i literally just stopped here to talk to you guys um <laughs> Fair enough. i was uh i was i was up in i was up by cleveland uh for the past day or so staying with uh jim cunnigan and uh, I was flying across Pennsylvania when you guys, uh, when I saw the saw the message that you guys were going to try to do a show. So I was like, hmm, I'm sure I could find some place to record. So uh, that's what I did. I hopped off 80 and headed towards Williamsport, and that's where I am now. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so it's not impossible to uh, to coordinate these sorts of uh, these sorts of live things, uh, you know, despite being on the road and despite not having a mobile hotspot or something, huh? Yeah, I mean, depending on where you are, obviously, if you're out in a completely rural area, you may have some issues. Uh, and even if you're not somebody like me, like I'm very lucky, I have uh, I, I've been given access by friends of mine to uh, their Optimum Online accounts and somebody else's Xfinity account, which those Wi-Fi's like the Optimum's all over the Northeast, and Xfinity seems to be in a lot of places too. But even without those, you can find places like McDonald's, Starbucks. Um, a lot of stores and rest like chain restaurants now are all offering free Wi-Fi. I mean, heck, during my travels, 
uh, when I went out when I went out west, I, I went as far as South Dakota, and I believe it was in Iowa and South Dakota, or it might have just been Iowa. The rest stops actually <laughs> offer free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Mm. Which is something you don't see on the on the East Coast, uh, which was kind of cool. So yeah, there's a couple of places I stopped. That I was able to upload stuff directly from a rest stop in the, what in seemingly in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> nice, awesome, awesome. So so back on May 23rd, uh, Jason and I interviewed you uh, prior to hitting the road as a van nomad. Um, so for the listeners that want to check out that interview, uh, you can find uh, you can find that by visiting tinyurl.com forward slash jhnomad. Again, tinyurl.com forward slash JH Nomad. I don't remember the uh, the custom URL I put for that, so that'll have to do for now. Um, so I guess why don't you provide a, a brief introduction as to uh, why you decided to pursue uh, the Van Nomad life? All right, sure. Well, yeah, I talked to you guys a few months ago about this. But yeah, my, my venture into Van Nomadism was supposed to be kind of an experiment. Um, I've been looking to get out of New York for quite a while, and uh, things have just held me up there, unfortunately. And I just, I really needed to sell my house because I didn't want to pay for it anymore. And after trying to figure out, you know, how I was going to live after selling my house and listening to your podcast for long enough, I decided to say, you know what, I have a, ve- I have a vehicle, I have a Honda Element that's kind of designed for camping and off-roading and stuff like that. I could probably try this. So I sold my house and my dog and I moved into my vehicle and we've now been in here for about two and a half months. Uh, and, uh... We may actually be doing it longer than I originally anticipated, but it's definitely been an interesting experience. So, but yeah, for me, it was basically about saving money. I wanted to sell my house and save as much money as I could in the interim until I finally decided where I was going to relocate to for a more permanent basis. Awesome. Very good. Very good. And I know when we talked a few months ago, um, I've, I've got this, uh, this, I guess this longer, this longer term plan, uh, to, you know, get, get a van and convert it and get passive income streams in place and such. And you just decided to, uh, to, to go for it. So I guess, um, tell us a little bit about, uh, what you, I guess the, a few things, or I guess just whatever you've learned, whatever you've learned over the past three months, uh, just kind of, uh, diving into it. Oh, geez, man. I have learned so many things. Number one, <laughs> never throw your cell phone at your dashboard because really bad things can happen after that. Um, number two, uh, when you hear a crack and you're in the woods coming from your dog, don't just assume she's chewing on a rock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else What else have I learned? Oh, man, there's so much. Uh, well, I mean, I, I started doing a vlog series about this, and I think I talked to you guys right at the beginning of when I started mm-hmm. that because I, I did a few of them before I actually left my house. And I've done one, pre- I've done a, a, a short video pretty much every day since I've been out on the road. I've skipped a few days here and there. But I said all along that I, I kind of thought my experience was going to be the, uh, how, the, like the how not to do van nomadism. It was kind of, kind of my, my, my channel was going to kind of like be a little blooper reel. Because I, I really was just winging this. I mean, I, I've learned a lot from listening to your show. And obviously, you and I, Shane, have discussed this at length um, for months now about all the different aspects of this. And, like, I had a good idea of what to expect. But I was going to be attempting, at least in the interim, uh, the more city-slash-suburban Vanu, which... Uh, often talked about uh, was probably not the best idea uh, that it could be done, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't encourage it. Uh, so that's how I started. And uh, that made it tougher, easier in some ways, tougher in others. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, I, I still, after two and a half months and all the problems I have, I still feel more free than I ever have in my life. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's great to hear. So I guess the, the main few pay, uh, the main, main few pain points for, for van nomads is, or I guess new van nomads is probably, uh, it's probably hygiene, uh, finding a place to park, uh, park for the night. And then maybe the third one is, is finances, but that, that third one's not, uh, not, uh, not really a, a concern to you since you sold your house. But I guess, uh, tell us a bit about, um, what you've, uh, have you, have you had, uh, any issues finding places to park every night? Um, and, uh, I guess, uh, as far as, you know, keeping up on hygiene, uh, how have you been, how have you been uh, solving those problems? Uh, well, the hygiene issue was solved through your show because I went ahead and got that Planet Fitness membership that you had often <laughs> talked about. And because uh, I tried it for a couple of weeks, I have a solar shower with me, but unfortunately, on Long Island, where I originally started this little experiment, there's really not a lot of places to use it. Uh, so I finally had to bite the bullet and uh, get the Planet Minute, Pl- Planet Fitness membership, and it's probably some of the best twenty-two bucks a month I've ever spent. Because uh, <laughs> even though to this day, two and a half months in, I still have yet to work out there. 
just being able to take a really hot, sh- you know, even though I, I was never a fan of hot showers until I went to Planet Fitness and like all their showers, no matter where I go, seem to be like boiling hot. And I'm like, no, ah, this isn't so bad. Um, um, but being able to get a, a really hot shower and also having a place to utilize Wi-Fi on a regular basis because, you know, they, they offer free Wi-Fi from their from their locations uh, has been really invaluable to me. So I, I was able to pretty much solve it by that. I mean, the past couple of weeks I've been on the road. I've, I've been very lucky. I've, I've stopped at a lot of different friends' places who have put me up for a night or two. And they obviously let me use their showers and stuff. But, you know, I've also stopped at a number of Planet Fitnesses. I've actually slept at a number of plant in the parking lot of a number of Planet Fitnesses. I slept in one in Iowa last week. Uh, just the other night I slept in one in Richmond Heights, Ohio. Um, I was actually on my way to one in, I think it's, Oh gosh, I don't even remember the name of the town. Port something or other in Jersey that I'm actually aiming for right now, uh, where I was planning on crashing the night. So uh, it's been huge in that regard. And then when once you get off, once you get out of the suburbs and the cities and stuff like that, as I've been traveling, you know, there's local, there's campsites you could stop at, there's rest stops everywhere you could stop at. You being hygienic really shouldn't be that much of a concern. Uh, you, you should, you should pretty much always be able to find something. And especially if you get out in the rural areas, you just go find a stream somewhere or, mm-hmm. you know, a, a lake and you can go just dive in and take a quick bath or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of options. People that are unhygienic are just lazy. <laughs> right. That's Absolutely. Right. I mean, there's, there's a lot, truck, there's lots there's of options. truck stops. I mean, truckers are on the road forever. <laughs> where do they, where do they stop? Besides yeah, home, sometimes you know it's there's options. It's expensive. Yeah, but. The, the, yeah. I was gonna say the only thing with truck stops is that uh, most of them charge for their showers and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, if you're if you're if you're not, if you don't have a membership somewhere else where you can get a shower regularly, then it may not be a big a, a bad idea because I know some places charge like three bucks a shower, five bucks a shower, whatever it is. And uh, you know, if you're somebody like myself who can go a couple of days without a shower if I need to. You know, it may not be such a bad idea if you're driving along. Ah, just throw five bucks at a shower every couple of days. You know, not the end of the world. Yeah, 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 definitely true, definitely true. So I guess uh, you you recently, uh, so, so you mentioned that you initially started this more so in the Long Island area. Then uh, around the, the time of the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest, you started heading west. And um, and obviously you went back to, to New York for a court date that where really nothing happened, unfortunately. And uh, then uh, you headed headed out to uh, to South Dakota. So I guess tell us a bit about your, your adventures out to South Dakota and uh, I guess uh, really, I guess, really living the, uh, the, the Van Nomad lifestyle or I guess uh, yeah, t- and distances. How, how easy was it to get? The, the South Dakota citizenship really oh oh my god dude I literally I mean I made a, I made a, I made a video about this and I posted it and stuff and I've talked to you guys about this but seriously it took me other than having to spend a night in South Dakota so I could get a receipt from a campsite or a hotel I chose a campsite because obviously I prefer to camp uh, other than having to spend the one night it literally took me less than 15 minutes to become a South Dakota resident <laughs> I, dr- I drove. I, I I left New York uh, about two weeks ago. What's today? Today's uh, today's sa- sa- Saturday. Yeah, the eleventh. Uh, I left New York a little over two weeks ago, and I slowly made my way out. Yeah, I, I slowly made my yeah. I slowly made my way out west. Uh, I stopped off in Jersey to to visit a friend. I stopped off in PA to camp with my kids for a couple days, and then I just started traveling along. And once I made it to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I was, I, first of all, I was actually able to stop at the offices of yourbestaddress.com and meet with a bunch of the women who I've been talking on the phone with for the past couple of months. <laughs> I was actually able to pick up my mail directly from them because as I was on my way out there, I received the notification that the cell phone I had ordered had, had arrived. And I called up. I said, hey, listen, I'm on my way there. Can I just stop and pick it up instead of having it forwarded? They're like, absolutely. Come on by. So I stepped in there and got to chat with them a little bit, uh, made sure I had all the paperwork necessary for my dr- to obtain my driver's license and my registration and whatnot. And then I went and used one of their recommended campsites, which, uh, you know, was like, I think it was 22 bucks for the night. It didn't say it had water and electric, but when you got there, you found out it did have water and electric. So 22 bucks a night for a campsite that offers water and electric is not a bad deal at all, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that um, was that was the the one place in Long Island that had water and electric that you stopped was like fifty six dollars a night or something 50, like that. You said fifty seven dollars, yeah, yeah for one of those Christ. spots. Um, That's so yeah, this room. is like you know almost exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
So I stayed there for the night. It was a nice place. I mean, granted, it was right next to one of the major highways, so it was a little loud. So for some people, it may be a little annoying. Um, I grew up near New York, New York City, so I'm quite <laughs> used to the noise. Um, but literally, I just I stayed there for the night. I got up in the morning. I, I packed up all my, my stuff. Murder Dog and I hopped in the car. We drove over to what their DMVs. They call them driver examination stations. Uh, I drove over there. I had no idea what to, what I was walking into. You know, I, I knew I had all the proper paperwork, but I walk in and I go to the counter and explain what I need. I said, "Hey, I'm here to obtain my driver's license. I'm from out of state. I have the paperwork. Blah blah blah." And the woman gives me my number and gives me two little for, two pieces two forms I have to fill out. She goes, "Okay, you, you know, you can go sit down and fill those out. You'll be called soon." I got literally two lines into the first form before my number was called. Like, that's unheard of in New York. Wow. And then I went up there, and literally, it, like I said, it took from the time I walked in the door to the time I walked out was less than 15 minutes. A number of those minutes was spent talking to the women behind the counter who wanted to have a conversation with me about why I was coming from New York. So the process itself probably took like 10 to 12 minutes, maybe. And I had to pay... Uh, I did have to pay $2 extra because I was using a debit card for their processing oh, fees. Wow, but the $2. cost, <laughs> yeah, because wait, because I, I was really not having a problem with the $2 because it cost me $28 for the license itself for a five-year license. And and you got and you got that on the spot too, yes, right? They, you didn't, they, you they, didn't they, have they, to wait? Nope. They took my oh. picture. They took my, they took my New York license and they handed me a brand new South Dakota license. And as the woman handed it to me, she said, here you go. Congratulations. You're now a South Dakota resident. That's all it wow. took. All it took to become a resident of the state <laughs> of South Dakota. Hand, hand over 28 bucks or, or 30 if you got a credit card or debit card and uh, you're good for five years. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, sounds like a uh, sounds like a pretty sweet deal. And uh, for those uh, who are interested in that, uh, yourbestaddress.com forward slash funny. Get ten percent. No, I'm kidding. You don't get ten percent off. We don't have an affiliate with them. But uh, yeah, yourbestaddress.com. Not yet. We you should, <laughs> man. You really should. I I, I I think I mentioned you. I think I mentioned the podcast while I was there a couple of times. I'm like, yeah, we're we're trying to send a lot of people your way. <laughs> um, and actually, um, they're about to blow up. Because while I was there, I learned I, the little day before I got uh, a woman who handles the car registration process. I sat down with her for a while and she told me that apparently there had been another company in Sioux Falls who did basically the same type of thing. They just up and closed their doors the day before without any warning, not even didn't oh. even get any warning to their staff, just closed up everything. So oh. now your best address is blowing up even more because they're getting all the clientele from this other company and all the employees are now desperately trying to get a job with your best address dot com. Wow. So they might become an even bigger operation than uh, than we're used to in fairly short order um, because they said people are just still flocking in. Uh, to get these things, whether it's RVers or they actually said uh, the one woman told me they actually have run into a number of people like myself who just are living out of their vehicles and decided they wanted to go this route. And uh, yeah, I, I cannot recommend them highly enough. Not only do I am I a big fan of the services they provide, and I think it's a very fair, extremely fair price. The people are just like ridiculously nice, super helpful. Um, heck, I even had one woman. Uh, who was handling the mail for uh, who handles the mail portion of it call me up after I had requested that one of because I pay for the digital mail service which is a couple bucks extra a month where they literally take pictures of your mail and then <laughs> email it to you so you know what show what showed up and you can either tell them you want it forwarded somewhere you can tell them you're going to hold you want them to hold it if you're going to be in the area or they, they'll just shred it for you or throw it out or whatever it is if you just don't want to deal with it and I got this one piece of mail that clearly wasn't meant for me. It was, somehow it got sent to my address anyway. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, not mine. You can discard it. And she actually took a look at this thing and decided on her own. That it looked like it was some kind of check of some sorts. So she called. She First she emailed me when I didn't respond right away. She called me. and was like, listen, I, I just want to make sure. You know, is it okay if I open this to check? And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure it's not for me. And she opened it up. And sure enough, it was a check for somebody else. But like they went above and beyond, actually, like they could have just taken my, you know, my recommendation and just discarded it without even thinking. But they're like so on top of things over there that they're like, no, you know what? Maybe this was a mistake. Let's just check to make sure. So, uh, all right, Phoenix, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining, man. It's good. To, uh, good to hear your story and have a good good evening there at work, man. 
It was it was a blast, guys. You guys had a great night. Um, as far as Peace. the South Dakota thing, can you uh, can you get your vehicle registered registered there too? Oh yeah. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. I'm actually in the process of doing that. I could have done it while I was there, um, but I had our uh, your best address offers a service where you can pay them. I think it's like forty bucks, and they'll do all the legwork for you. So I had already I had already put that in motion and paid in advance for all that stuff. So I just said, you know what, you guys just keep handling that. And they did let me know that the South, as far as registrations go, the South Dakota government is a little backed up right now. So it is taking a little bit longer yeah, for that have, to happen. They probably have like five employees. So I mean, yeah, probably a little bit Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they uh, so so it was going to take a little while, a longer. So I was like, you know what, I already paid you guys. You can handle it. So I'm just waiting to get the notification that my my plates have arrived in the mail, and then yes, I will have a I'll have a South Dakota uh, registration. I'll have South Dakota plates, and at that point, I can obtain uh, South Dakota and car insurance as well. Very nice. nice. Yeah, All that's right, guys. awesome to hear. Thank you much. Guys, have a great night. Yep, you too. Phoenix. Right, Phoenix. Thanks, man. Take it easy, Phoenix. Peace Phoenix. Out. All right, so I'm gonna go to the uh, to the D Live chat here again. If you guys want to uh, want to. Uh, I guess join in on the chat. Just go dlive.io forward slash at Shane Radliff, I think, um, or just uh, find mm-hmm. uh, on any of the uh, any of our pages. You can find a link to uh, a link to it. Uh, but Ty's there in the chat, and he had uh, he had an idea: jump on empty mm-hmm. lots and turn them for travelers to stop and rest or overnight stays. So I guess uh, you know, getting a parking lot and just uh, you know making it making it uh, a stop uh, a normal stop for for van nomads. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a great idea. I actually remember uh, one of the YouTube videos. This would have been in. Uh, this would have been right on the other side of the uh, Mexico, or I guess on the other side of the U.S. border into Mexico. But there's a uh, a casino, and they have a massive parking lot that they just leave open for people that are living in their vehicles. Um, so I mean, they they do exist; they are out there. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's a a pretty a pretty uh, pretty pretty a uh, great idea there. Um, so you got the uh, South Dakota. All you got, you're getting the South Dakota stuff lined out. I guess um, Jason, uh, Bodie, you got any uh, any questions or comments? Uh, right now uh, I, i'd be curious to see the van life with an electric vehicle i don't yeah, know it, if if the technology uh, i think i don't know if the technology is there yet i think there are some like what's the normal you know mileage on one of those like on one charge like 150 or 200 miles or something like that uh it, 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 it depends up to 300 depends vehicle yeah there's some vehicles that are up to 300 but uh the the recharging of the batteries would be the issue right but that would be an interesting dynamic if mm-hmm. if we eventually get to the point where there isn't just gas stations. There's the electric fill-ups, and well, you can pay that way. Here, here in California, they do have electric gas stations that you can you can pull up and 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 charge a vehicle for a fee, and you know stay overnight. I um, wonder as and I, stay overnight, and stay overnight. That's huge. Well, yeah, it ta- it takes like it takes a few hours to to fully oh, charge true. the battery. Yeah. I wonder if there would be a way without. I, I wonder if there would be a way. So obviously, whenever whenever the tires are moving, um, you know that's how. Like that's you know the. Uh, I'm 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 wondering if there's a way to harness that energy that's produced to where you can actually well, charge your vehicle while you're driving. Yeah, we we talked about that before yeah. with with uh, regenerative braking or having a uh, uh, like an like an alternator uh, attached to the axle to to charge the like alternative batteries and whatnot. Uh, I I believe it's possible, but it's. Like the the technology is fishy. Oh, it's uh, just it's just uh, it's inefficient. Yeah, it's inefficient. You're spending and, it on uh, mechanical energy, and then you're trying to capture the mechanical energy and convert it back to electricity. You already yeah. have a huge drop. Right. So, it, it, for for mitigating how much energy it's using, it's great to offset that or use it for ter- different auxiliary functions. But right. I I don't think you're kind of getting into like the the plug in the power supply into itself thing. Yeah, uh, and there there is there is for for um, ne- there's a Nissan camper van that's fully electric with a pop top tent, uh, and it has a hundred and twenty four mile an hour range. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. No, I'm sh- I'm sure there's I'm sure there's ways like uh, if 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 that was the route that someone wanted to go, you could obviously plan your route around that. But I mean, going on like if you wanted to travel cross country and you know knock out like seven or eight hours in a day, um, that might be a, a little bit uh, of a difficulty. But hey, I mean, if you don't have to pay for gas, then that, that might be might be worth it because that is one of the biggest expenses, especially when you look at some of these some of these vans that get you know seven or eight miles per gallon. Uh, that can eat up uh, right. eat up a portion of your budget pretty quickly. So maybe it would be, um, and maybe it'd be worth it. Actually, I don't know. Um, I think it'd be cool to see, especially with the, um, all the other technologies. Like he was saying, he wants to get uh, Phoenix was saying about getting, you know, hooking up his power 
to the back of the van and maybe setting up a studio, like would that be a lot easier in an electric van, even though the costs are higher and all that? Mm-hmm. If if you could have that first chunk and you did have access to power, how much easier would that be? Because I think a lot of people, well, Jeremy's car isn't that old, but a lot of people that do this, they they get an old beat up van and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a cheap initial cost but maintenance and all that i'd li- i'd like to see how that weighs out and see if there could be like a techno techno vanu <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right yeah yeah and as far know. as yeah as, as far as power i mean solar is, solar is so cheap now it's i mean mm-hmm. you can get you can get uh, the panels and a and a charge controller for like 3 for less than 300 bucks on amazon it's actually one 200 watt and one 100 watt panel um with a charge controller for like 300 bucks or less so Oh um, well, yeah, there's there's all alternatives too. Like you can do, uh, we talked about wind turbines and 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 um, like water wheels. Like if if you're if you're in the woods or something. So I mean, the 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 technology is there, in in its in its infant infancy form. But you know, somebody's gonna have to put it together for it to be like truly viable for for van nomadism. Well, what's that? What's that thing in Turkey? They have a whole highway with a stretch of. Um vertical turbines that picks mm-hmm. up the off the uh the breeze from all the vehicles going by so you could actually maybe a high i don't know that'd be interesting imagine if the highway could charge your car <laughs> that, that would be beautiful oh my god you'd never have to well. stop <laughs> yeah. you oh and uh, live yeah. stream and go camp dropped here in the chat another, another method is just switching out the battery at the station yeah i suppose you could just have you know batteries on deck and one mm-hmm. goes dead you just pop in a new one but i don't know um kind of like the know. bike share you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. there you go uh, maybe, maybe you could set up like a, a a trickle charger on some some batteries to, via solar panel or something yeah, yeah, and I want to touch on one other thing that uh, that Jeremy was talking about, uh, like on the way out to South Dakota and such. And this is something that I've noticed. Just even even when I started talking about van nomadism, and even I guess just when I was on my ten day little road trip, I mean, I had you know for that little road trip, I had like ten or fifteen pe- people reach out to me and say, "Hey, if you're driving by, feel free to stop by." And so when I told about the van nomad thing, people all over the U.S. were like, uh, you know, Anarchists all over the U.S. were like, "Yeah, if you're ever in this area, you can, you can come stay, you can come sleep on my couch." It's like, oh, that's that's awesome. So I think it'd be really really easy to just plan your travels around, you know, just meeting up with anarchists. And uh, oh. I don't think it'd be difficult at all. And I, Jeremy, you have experience with this. It's not difficult, is it? Yeah. No. It it. Uh, it stayed with Cut, so, cutting out a little bit jeremy people that i know for a while let me know like of people who i like barely know just, just because you know just because they know they know of me and they know what i'm doing and they're like yeah if you want to come by it's been great uh you know i i had people hit me up in pretty much every state i went to <laughs> yeah hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Even before I met uh, T. Samov and uh, and Phoenix, um, they because I was going up to Chicago for Derek Bros's Liberate Your Mind tour before the uh, before the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest, and they're like, "Yeah, come on up, man. Yeah, you know, c- come on up to you know Wisconsin, Chicago, or you know, Aurora. You know, come on, come on up, and, and we'll meet." So yeah, even people that uh, I, I don't know, I, I really like the anarchist community. Uh, I really, really do. And plus, I mean, a lot of people are so um, people outside of like Austin, Texas, or uh, you know, New Hampshire. Uh, a lot of folks are, or I guess even up in Michigan as well. A lot of folks are kind of uh, they're, they're kind of you know by themselves where they live. So I think uh, even just even if they don't know somebody personally and they just you know see them on fascist book, it's always nice to meet up with folks. So um, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't think it'd be hard to plan a trip around that uh, at all. Yeah, so J- Jeremy, I I got I got a question for Jeremy. What's up, Ode? How how much harder do you think this all would have been without fascist book? Uh. Uh, probably a lot more difficult, actually. I mean, I'm sure I could have worked around it, right. but it, it's really it's been very helpful for me because there's a lot of people that that's the only connection I have with them. Right. So I was able to coordinate a lot of my stuff by just doing private messages or even just I mean, I the one day I just threw up a post and said, hey, I'm leaving South Dakota. I'm going to be headed through Minnesota and Wisconsin. Who's around? And I got I got uh, comments on that post. I got private messages. Other people who knew of other ways to contact me just reached out and said, hey, I saw your post. So, uh, yeah, having some sort of social media where you have a, uh, you know, a wide array of people on there definitely helps. That's a good question. Um, Because without that, I would 
yeah, I would have had to rely on just the people that I'm really close to and that I, you know, contact on a regular basis. Right. And I, yeah, ha having the Facebook thing was huge because people I wasn't even expecting to hear from were like, "Hey, you're gonna be near my town. Come on over. We'll have a beer. You can. Well, I'll make you dinner or something." And uh, yeah, it's been great. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of. I, yeah, I, been... I figured that would be the answer, but that was unfortunate because I've been, you know, trying to move closer and closer to towards deleting <laughs> fascist book, but goddamn it, I don't think I'll be able to now. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, you like I said, it can be done as long as you find as long as you set up another way to contact a whole bunch of people ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, if you just want to rely on a core group of people, sure. But if you want to leave the option open to maybe seeing some places that you hadn't even considered meeting people you hadn't even thought to meet. Unfortunately, right now, Fascist Book is probably one of the best avenues for that because so many despite all the complaints there's a lot of us on there mm -hmm. and you know you whether it's in a group that you make a make a post in or even on your on your personal wall or whatever it's just you you leave the opportunity open to reach so many more people that way and like i said i i had people i hadn't even considered reach out to me and be like hey man i saw your post uh sure i'd love to meet you okay <laughs> yeah I think that's kind of the importance of these kind of like normie normie platforms as mm -hmm. as they're getting more proliferated. It, you get enough fingers out there, but then you know that everybody has that face, that that first facade that's kind of friendly and open and general for everybody. And then, yeah, you can reach a ton of people that way. But then you pull them in to all these little subsets and things like D Live and stuff, and you can kind of get this offshoot. I think that's how we grow. Mm -hmm. um, the the inter the, interconnect um, interconnectability yeah mm -hmm. it's really i think it's really important especially in the current paradigm to have that variability well yeah, yeah inf information is the most valuable thing that we possess if if you don't have a means to share that information then then what good is the information right right so so things like facebook and 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 twitter and and d live stim it uh it, d sound etc 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 um, having the ability to share that information allows you to connect with people that are that are like minded, but it also mm -hmm. allows you to connect with people that are that are interested in in whatever it is, whatever information you have. Um, oh gosh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think as far as sorry, I, I think as as far as um, you know these platforms, um, I, like I, I've actually you know on Steam it uh, when I interviewed uh, it was uh, was uh, I guess an a, I guess an addendum to the building the second realm series when we had on uh, oh god I can't remember his name but it was some guy that had just been commenting on the Steam it posts um, uh -huh. and you know we had him on and interviewed him so I, I've met you know some really great people through Steam it and then also you know through Fascist Book too Carl randomly found the Vonnie mm -hmm. Podcast Facebook page <laughs> and commented on there and I said shit man you're a Vandal man in Australia you want to come on the podcast and yeah I go worked out that way so um as, as far we, as we've, ha we've had them on twice now <laughs> yeah awesome. so as as far as um you know connecting with people and reaching people it, it uh, might be i don't know as, as much as um as much as privacy advocates and such would like to get off that book like myself i mean uh eh, i mean it's, there's 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 a lot of a lot of great networking that happens there even though they've completely destroyed organic reach so um right yeah, I, yeah that's, you that's, just that's have point. yeah you have to learn you have to learn to use it responsibly this is the way I look at it these days. Mm -hmm. And and by that, I mean, um, if you're going to continue to use something like Facebook, for example, you have to accept uh, the lack of privacy. Um, but as long as like for me, my biggest problem with Facebook for the longest time wasn't that lack of privacy because I knew that going in. But it was more so just getting bogged down in stupid conversations <laughs> and arguments for no reason that I wasted like years doing. Yep. Now I feel I use it a lot more responsibly. I only go on Facebook to post my content every day, which I post on Steam at first, and then I share it to Facebook. And then when I need to reach out to other people, I go on there, make a post, and wait for people to respond to me. And I don't, you know, I don't go engaging in other conversations. And and it's I'm actually a lot happier now that I do that. Uh, I still check it religiously, but that's just like a bad habit. But I feel like I'm a lot more responsible user these days, and it makes me it makes me a lot more happy. And it, it I, I'm getting the most you know I'm getting the best use out of it. I feel, especially in my current situation, I, I feel it's it's really help. It's it's more of a help than a hindrance right now. Where six months ago I would have thought the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and and although the Steemit platform has been good too, because didn't uh, uh, I mean didn't didn't you and the Wandering Agorist uh, connect first on uh, on Steemit? 
Yes, Chris, uh, our friend Chris Grayson. Yeah. I no, actually, uh, it's funny you mentioned him. I actually met up with him a couple of days ago again. Oh shit! Really? Uh, through yeah, through nice. Steemit, he sent me a he sent me a, he sent me a, he re, he he, resp- uh, he uh, commented. Oh, apparently he had been uh he told me he was in i think he made a post about this so i'm not like sharing private information or anything um but he was in india he was in southern indiana hanging out at the casinos for like a week or so because that's how he makes a lot of his money um it's just gambling <laughs> is wow. playing the poker and stuff <laughs> and yeah that's that, that's what he does um so uh, he was down there for like a week so he fell behind um, on my vlogs and when he finally caught up he's like oh man i'm actually headed up towards uh you know headed up towards northern indiana i see that you're up in michigan maybe we can meet up and uh, we actually met up one night. He was he was staying. Uh, he may actually still be there now, but there's a place in Michigan, south uh, south of Lake Michigan, called the uh, Dunes Wilderness, uh, where there's a national park and a bunch of other stuff like that. And there's free dispersed camping there. <laughs> and that's where he has coordinates. And it's like, here's where I'll be. If you can make it, come on down. And uh, I ended up I ended up getting there really, really late, scaring the ever living crap out of him um, because he he I guess he misread my last message because I told him I had overshot him. But by saying that, I meant, OK, I'm going to turn around and circle back to where you are. He misread that, thought I wasn't coming, went to sleep. So when I showed up at three thirty in the morning and pulled right up next to his vehicle, he had a heart attack because he thought somebody <laughs> was just busting it on his spot. Um, but, yeah, we we uh, w- once he realized it was me, we uh, we sat and chatted for like an hour and then uh, we both went to sleep for you know for a few hours. Then we got we got up in the morning. We hung out. We had some coffee. We went to, we went right down to Lake Michigan and hung out on the beach there for a while. Just chilled out and talked. So yeah, it was. I wish I could have stayed with him longer because he was planning on staying there for at least a week. Um, but yeah, I, I crossed paths with him again, and we're hopefully going to do it again soon because uh, he's he's a lot of fun to hang out with. I, I, I love Chris. He's a, he's a great guy, and um, for sure, yeah. it was it was good to see him again. Yeah, yeah. So we got a, another message in chat from Camp. He said, uh, "Don't pontificate, self-liberate. Love it, love it." Um, so I guess uh, uh, so. So Jeremy, you've got uh, a, a trial coming up uh, here. I think uh, on Monday, and uh, um, I'll have you talk just a little bit about that. Uh, you know, what's uh, the current status and all of that. Uh, but then also, I guess, um, are are you planning on uh, you know making another trip out out west? Are you planning on uh, you know uh, you know making another uh, adventure after that's uh, taken care of? Yeah, depending on what happens, um, you know, it, ho- hopefully I'm acquitted. <laughs> if, if that's the case, I'm probably going to hit the road immediately again um, because of some other issues I've had. I, I don't want to be on Long Island any longer than I have to. Uh, so, yeah, it's really going to depend on what happens uh, with the trial. But my plan is if I'm, quote unquote, allowed to leave, I'm going to be doing it again. Uh, I'll probably hang close to New York for a little while so I can see my kids a bit. But I do plan on making another trip west, uh, possibly out to south, as far as out as uh, as far out of South Dakota again, because I did not get to see as much of it as I would have liked to, and it, it really is pretty out there. It's beautiful. It's beautiful country, and uh, I would I would definitely love to hang out there, uh, see see some more of it. So, yeah, I definitely have plans to make more travels. Um, I have a tentative plan to possibly head north for a while, uh, up to like New Hampshire and Maine. Because I have some Anne fam up there who has requested my presence on numerous occasions. <laughs> um, I have people, you know, like we were talking about before, you know, people all over the place. I have people hitting me up from almost every state in the, uh, you know, in the in the lower 48, saying, "Hey, if you're in this area, hey, if you come through here." <laughs> so I know I have options, and uh, I would love to take advantage of more of them because this trip in particular, I had planned on making a lot more stops, but I ran into some difficulties. A number of times, some of them were self-created, um, others were not. <laughs> don't um, throw phones, kid. <laughs> yes, yes, don't throw your phone, kid, especially when you're driving at 80 miles an hour. Um, speak, actually, speaking of 80 miles an hour, that was one of the coolest things. When I was, I don't even remember what road it was. It was either uh, or something like that. But uh, there's a road if you take if you just take 80 and go westward and just keep going and going and going until you hit Iowa. Right before you hit the end of Iowa, uh, going west. You hook a right and it takes you up to the right, you know, takes you up to the southeast corner of South Dakota. As soon as I crossed over the border for the first time in my life, I saw an 80 mile an hour speed limit sign. (laughs) I was so stoked. I was like, I've been doing 80 this entire time. Now I can go even faster. This is great. Yeah, that, that's that's how it was. And I was uh, heading heading south towards Texas and Illinois. I mean, the uh, they just, I guess, a couple of years ago, raised the speed limit to 70 on the interstate. And um 
but the problem with driving through Illinois, especially, I mean, the, the, the part of Illinois that no one thinks about, you know, the, the part that's not Chicago, um, there's a lot of small towns. So you'll drive, you'll drive, uh, and I guess, uh, You'll, you'll, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stoppage, a lot of road construction. I mean, it's pretty much endless road construction, and they they're so broke that they had to cease all road construction. I guess. Um, so now the now the now the roads are still blocked off, and they're just not doing anything with them. So, um, but yeah, like when I got into <laughs> into some other states, um, I mean, like the uh, I think the turnpike going into Oklahoma was was like 80, and yeah, that was the first time I'd ever seen that, and it was just uh, I I don't know, it's 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 a different world outside of our communist cell holes, Jeremy. Our uh, yeah, I guess our our previous communist cell holes. Oh. It- yeah, it really is. I mean, I, I I think they finally raised the speed limit to 65 on the thruway in New York, but 55 is still considered the state speed limit. Because like every other sign that has you know says state speed limit 55. So yeah, wow. it's it's definitely a it's definitely a a, a world of difference <laughs> being able to uh, go out and cruise at a lot faster speeds. I mean, you burn a little more gas, but you pick up a lot more time. So you know, yeah. depends on either way to look at it, but. Yeah, I, I definitely plan on traveling more, and uh, I, I want to see, because uh, I, I mean, for me personally, I this is my, you know, going out to South Dakota, that's the furthest west I've ever driven. I had never been any oh, wow. further than the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest in Dalton, Michigan, until this, so, you know, I've been in California once for like a minute, but I flew there, so this is my furthest driving experience, and oh. I've done, by the time I get back to Long Island, I forgot to reset my, my mileage counter. But I'm pretty sure I've done it. I will have done at least three thousand miles on this trip. Um, Damn. Because because it was about it was about a, it was about fourteen hundred miles straight shot from Long Island to where to the it's like the border of South Dakota. And I obviously went a little further in and I took a bunch of detours along the way. Um, but yeah, so I'm 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 positive I'm going to do over three thousand for this trip. Um, so, but like you were saying earlier about the gas being the best, biggest expense, yeah, that starts to add up. But, you know, like I get to see so many things that I've never seen before. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having fun. <laughs> very good. Even, very good. Uh, I was just going to say, because even with all the problems that I've had, I've managed to have solutions come up like instantaneously. It's been crazy. Like oh, I keep thinking. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you, you and I have talked about this and, and you're like, I don't know if you if you if you fucked a leprechaun or, or, or you ate a I, uh, clover or whatever, but. Somehow, like every time something goes wrong, it's like right there's the the solution. Yeah, it's it's been crazy. Like you know, I've been in towns I've never even heard of before, and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, something went wrong with the car. I can't go over fifty five miles an hour. Wait a minute, I'm six miles away from a Honda dealership. How did that work out? All right, I do something <laughs> stu- I do something stupid to break my windshield at eighty miles an hour. Crap! Now what am I gonna do? Wait a minute, I, I just happen to be the next town over from some place with a Safe Light Auto Glass where I can get it replaced. Free. no way you know <laughs> same thing my, my my dog gets sick and i happen to be like literally within walking distance of one of the best vets in indiana because they were just amazing it's just like yeah you know uh this is actually it's something the wandering agorist has told me repeatedly since him and i first hooked up because he's been following me for a while through like my other projects and stuff and he knows that i complain about a lot of things and he knows that i've been you know, going through hell in new york but he kept trying to tell me once you get out here, he's like, you're going to find this synchronicity, man. Mm-hmm. He's like, you'll, he's like, whether you want to or not, you're just going to stumble into things working out because the stress of being in New York and the stress of your everyday life is not going to be there anymore. And you're actually going to have a minute to breathe. And damned if he wasn't right, because every time something has happened where if I had been in New York, my immediate mindset would have been, oh, I'm fucked. Oh, my God, this is going to be horrible. Um my immediate mindset and still was, all right, let's assess. Where are we? What's around us? What can we do? And man, for somebody who's as angry as I am and is pissed, you know, who's, who's as cranky as I am most of the time, it's been one hell of a change. It's been insane. Like, I've been smiling almost nonstop. Even when bad shit happens, like, I yell and scream for like a minute and then I'm over it. And uh, it's been a world of difference. That's incredible to hear, but uh, I don't know how far out west you're trying to travel. But uh, I mean, if uh, you know, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, January fifth to January nineteenth, you go uh, spend some time oh. in the desert with uh, four thousand other van nomads. Um, I don't know if you're trying to head out that far west, but uh, that is an option. <laughs> and that's in uh, Quartzsite, Arizona. So yeah, that's going to uh, be a hell of a haul. Well, I well I do plan on making it out to Arizona at some point. My goal was to make Jack Fest next year. Um, but again, it depends on what happens with my, with my situation next week. 
and, and also the- with my fa- also with my my family because they're not ready to move now. So I'm probably going to keep doing this for a while longer. And if you know if I'm still doing this come January, there's a good chance I'll head out that way. Yeah, yeah, it looks it, it looks awesome. It looks uh, really really incredible. I always see. I mean. Basically every Van Nomad, you know, uh, vlog that I follow, they all make it out there. It's it's kind of like that 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 one thing you have to do as a Van Nomad uh, is head out to River Tramp Rendezvous, and then while you're out there, you might want to head out hit up Slab City too. I mean, it seems like a lot of Van Nomads go test that out as well. But uh, it's a creepy place, I guess. So um, you've you've got you've got that's, Murder Dog. That's in Cal- that's you. in Cali though, so be careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, eventually, I was planning on trying to make it out to Cali to see your ass, Jason, since you'll never leave the goddamn state. <laughs> <laughs> oh man eventually eventually yeah yeah that's i've heard that before um but i but i actually do have a number of friends a couple a couple again that i had totally forgotten about one of them reached out to me the other day and was like hey you're traveling out west why don't you come down to arizona i totally forgot he was down there it's like so i do have i have people out there too so uh i would like to, i would like to be able to make it that far i'd love to get down to texas and uh, see some of the anarchist communities and some of the anarchists I know down there. Um, I have an open invitation in Wyoming. Uh, I have an open invitation in well, Colorado. If, 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 you, if you don't go see Michael, he's going to he's gonna have a heart attack or something, man. Well, the, the, Michael's the reason that I did not go see Rushmore this time around when I was in South Dakota. Because not that I care about Rushmore as, for what it stands for, but I wanted to go to Mount Rushmore with Murder Dog and take and bip um, and I've also been told that you can actually hear the freedom fiends on the radio from Mount Rushmore. <laughs> so I was going to I was going to do a vi- I was going to figure out when it played on the air and I was going to do a video of Murder Dog and I listening to most likely myself on the radio <laughs> from there. <laughs> but when I looked at how far away it was cuz it was another like five and a half hours across the state, I was like, "All right, that's like another half day at least there and back." And if I get that close to Wyoming and don't go, Michael will probably disown me. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just I just skipped that part of the trip this time. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> very good, very good. Um, I let me let me see if I'm trying to think. There, there was something I was going to mention that was going to be funny, but I'm not very funny, so it's probably good I forgot it. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Well, you guys, you guys got any uh, any other questions uh, or anything for for uh, for Jeremy here? Uh, at, yeah. How, when you, sorry, go ahead, buddy. I was gonna say, when are you coming to New Hampshire? Well, that's what I said before. I have I have a number of people up up in the Northeast who have requested my presence. So it depends if if I if I walk out of this trial next week and I get acquitted and I'm allowed to just go wherever I want. Um, there's a good chance that that's my next trip because. Yeah. Getting into you know, well, yeah, but it's it's just because it's getting into August now, and I've been very lucky that I have not run into a lot of hot weather since I've been out here. Mm-hmm. There was like one week on Long Island that it hit in the nineties for a week, uncomfortable. Um, but you know, f- actually, I, Phoenix mentioned it before the little the little uh, uh, personal air conditioner thing. I bought one of those, you know, one of those as seen on TV deals, <laughs> which is basically just a water uh, cooling device. And uh, but I use that for the dog and it's it's been a lifesaver because even in the really hot temperature, she's been able to stay cool without me having to keep the car running. Mm-hmm. Um, but huge. I don't ex- I don't expect that luck to, to last forever. I'm sure there's another heat wave coming and uh, it makes the most sense for me to get as far north as I can. So uh, hopefully- it's been it's been hot up here, man. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, high 90s in some days. Ooh, it's been brutal. Pretty bad. I, yeah. Like I said, it's I've been humid. lucky. I, yeah. I, I've been I've been lucky not to encounter that too much. Uh, it was a little hot in northern Indiana when I was there a few days ago. But again, I, but there I had a house to stay in, so it wasn't too bad. Right. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's probably going to be my next trip. Um, was heading up to because I have you know I know obviously you're there, and I know a bunch of other people in New Hampshire, and I have a couple of people all the way up in Maine too. So I was thinking about maybe making a trip, like a round trip, like heading up and then uh, either going straight to Maine and staying there for a little while and then circling back down or doing it vice versa. I don't know yet. But, yeah, the plans are in the works for that. Sweet. That'll be awesome. Yeah. So uh, are you, are you going to hit up, hit up Freedom Ranch when you're down there in the southwest? See Kokesh? What? Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you broke up. You broke up on that, man. What was that? <laughs> you going to head to Freedom Ranch uh, when you're in the southwest to see Kokesh? 
No, no, no. Unless no. I'm doing a unless I'm doing a drive by for a pies at him or something, maybe. But <laughs> it depends. Uh, if you stay in, you stay in a parking lot, you might you might catch him. <laughs> he might. Yeah, find I'll, I'll, you. Be, I'll be. I'll be. <laughs> I'll, I'll be I'll be sure to stay clear of all WalMarts while I'm in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. So I guess uh, really the, the the last question I'd like to get on the record here for for the listeners, and you've kind of already uh, alluded to it. But um, so so obviously before you hit the road, you were kind of uh, you weren't really sure well, how this was uh, how it was going to be. You've heard you you heard us talk about it a lot. You heard uh, uh, if you listen to the the Van Nomadism series, you heard the Without Bound documentary talking about how great the lifestyle was. Um, so I guess after after three months of experience, uh, would you recommend it? Have you uh, felt a, an increase in your freedom uh, and your in, in vulnerability to coercion? Uh, well. The coercion question may be a little separate because obviously I've dealt with some stuff in New York that I'm sure. still getting coerced and they're trying to extort me. Um, but I said this after after a week on the road, and uh, I'll say it again now. This has been the most freeing experience I've ever had, and I highly, highly encourage anybody who has the opportunity to try that, even just try it out, even to just do what I'm doing, just to see, just to see. Even if you don't think you know you're gonna you want to buy a van and convert it and do all that stuff. Yeah, if you have the opportunity, if you have some time off, if you happen to work a job that you're already able to be mobile anyway, dude, get in your car and go for a drive for a couple of weeks. Go go experience this shit. There's so many things, like, uh, you know, even aside from having the community out there that's that's been so helpful and the people that I've run into and the people that have offered me places to stay or food or whatever, even without that, just being out there and finding that there's things like, you know, like campendium.com, like where you can find free places to stay, you know, um, there is ways you could do this and not spend a lot of money at all. And, uh, I think it's totally worth it for people to try because not being tied down to a place anymore. I've been tied down to someplace my entire life. You know, I'm 41 years old. This is the first time I've been free like this. And it is absolutely amazing. Like I said, even with the bad stuff, I am having the time of my life out here. Right. Other and than being separated from my kids, it's great. <laughs> yeah, and and as far as uh, I mean, the anarchists, you know, we have it a lot. E we have we have this even easier than I mean, e it's already it's already quite easy. But um, you know, we we have it even easier because we've got this this community. Um, but there <laughs> there is a th there is a really good Van Nomad community out there as well. Once you get out, uh, once you get more more so out west, it's where a lot of them uh, kind of kind of hang out. Um, but uh, I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of meetups. There are a lot of people doing this. Jeremy, you said you've you've, you've met a couple folks in Long Island that were doing it. Um, but yeah, out west. I mean, it's it's basically I I don't remember what uh, what interstate it is in uh, in California, but uh, it's one of the videos I was watching. You just hit that interstate, or you just hit that hit that road, and uh, you'll see just you'll continuously see people just living in the, living out of their vans. Um, like this is uh, the, the the van nomad community is great, but uh, you know the anarchists we have we have it a little easier with uh, the community we've we've kind of fostered online. So um, yeah, you guys have any other questions or comments or anything of the sort? Uh, I, I just, I just want to know, like, since, since you've been at this for a while now and, and, and you've learned a lot of tips and tricks, um, what, what has been like the most helpful thing that you've learned? Oh, that's tough, man. I mean, I made a joke about that earlier, but, uh, well, actually, well, I, I don't know if it's the most important, but something that's been hugely, um, beneficial to me, cause, and this is going back to the electricity qu uh, conversation we, you guys were having earlier about, you know, different methods for that um having a jump pack for your vehicle especially if you have a small you know if you have a vehicle like mine that it's not an rv or something like that having one of those is huge because i figured out that i can run my car on accessory for about two hours without having to turn it back on again um so a lot of times where like i thought like oh no my stuff's running dead or whatever and i'm gonna park for the night it's like all right well you can leave the car an accessory for a little while but having the jump pack is a great thing because in case you like because i've done it a couple of times where i've i've left the car an accessory i've been watching a movie or something and then i pass out for a little while mm -hmm. and i wait i wake up and the car's uh, the car won't start and it's like oh crap what are you gonna do it's like oh you got a pack in the back man <laughs> you know no big deal <laughs> you just throw that down so that's been huge um and uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, that's probably the one of the more important things I've had to deal with. Um, and the other thing is if, if you're going to do this and you're going to take an animal with you, be prepared for a lot of extra costs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. There was uh, there's one I guess fan nomad vlog that I follow, and they have uh, they have a dog, and I mean it's basically the same time as yours. Um, they're they're actually traveling up to Alaska though, um, so like they yeah their their dog had got into some shit or something. Um, so yeah, I mean that's yeah it, it's definitely uh definitely um, an additional additional thing to take care of. But uh, what uh, what they said was uh, you know it's uh it's a lot better having a dog with you on the road, uh, especially if you're by yourself. I think that that be that be a I don't know, positive thing at least. I've thought about getting. Oh, oh. I thought I thought about getting a cat one on the road, but how, how hard do you think it would be to do this with kids? Cat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you could. You need, need a much bigger. Need a much bigger vehicle, but. <laughs> right. um, right. But I, I've actually, you know, I've actually been considering that lately. As much as my goal, my long-term goal is still to eventually buy land again and start a farm. I've I've been thinking like the more I've been doing this, the more I've been loving it. I have been considering either getting a pop up camper that I could tow around, or possibly switching up to an RV and seeing if I could bring my kids with me for a while. Um, because I would like to see a lot more of the country. I would like to visit a lot more people. And I actually had a really in depth conversation. Uh, with uh, with Merrick Van Landingham, who I think you guys are all, all familiar I was, with. I was just oh, yeah. thinking about that name, yeah. Yeah, Mer- Merrick and I had a really long conversation about doing unschooling on the road, mm-hmm. and uh, I think I think that would. I mean, obviously, it'll cost a little more money, um, you know, because so, if I get something bigger, I'm going to have to spend even more on gas and whatnot. But I think the ability to not only let my kids kind of guide their own education, but do it on the fl- like do it on the road, and actually getting not just like looking up and like learning about stuff and reading about it, but actually going to experience all of it. Would all the be museums in, would, and all yeah, the, ex- oh my it, God. Exactly. Amazing. I, that's what I'm talking about. Like instead of reading about the Grand Canyon, hey kids, let's go drive there. Yeah, right. You know, let's, it's, let's, it's, let's it, spend a week at the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Better than reading about it or looking it, at pictures. Ex- exactly. I, I, I'm, I'm really starting to consider this now. I mean, obviously I have to talk to their mom about this, but I'm really, Really, really can maybe sinking some money into into doing into doing this more full time, at least for the next couple of years, and uh, putting my farm dream off for a little bit longer. Because well, what if you buy what if you buy land when you can, still keep moving, maybe buy another plot somewhere else, and basically travel between them <laughs> if you that's, do it right. That's possible too. That, that's possible too. I mean, uh, I, I don't, I don't like the idea of being tied down to too many places. But if you know, if I could get like somewhat uncultivated land, yeah, maybe that's not such a bad idea. Just something I could use while I'm there, instead of having to worry about any structures on it or anything like that. It's a possibility, but I'm right, definitely and, considering. And, and, and keep in mind, Rayo, Rayo did talk about, um, and, and he, he's, uh, I'm going to paraphrase badly, but he said, uh, you know, vehicle nomadism is not a, uh, he's, uh, I've never said vehicle nomadism is a panacea, but uh, it's a great interim lifestyle. Um, just getting people out of the state of survival society, getting them out of their mm-hmm. nine to five slave jobs and, uh, you know, g- giving them time to, um, to, I guess, really reflect on their life um, and have time to actually think uh, because a lot of people don't, uh, don't have a whole lot of time to do that nowadays. Um, so, like, even just as an interim lifestyle, like, my end goal, I mean, I've got, I don't know, van nomadism is a first step, and I don't know how long I'll do that. Obviously, I'm not on the road yet. But, um, I mean, I, I, I want to off-grade homestead in Illinois at some point, you know, in Southern Illinois, maybe. And uh, that's one option. I also want to buy a sailboat um, and, uh, you know, just sail around. So, I mean, um, as far as uh, what you decide to do in the future, I mean, you can still do all of that. Uh, you obviously can. And um, <coughs> I don't know. It's, just, it's, it's kind of that it's, it's kind of that thing. I mean, would you, um, would, would, would uh, not you specifically, but just a general you, would you rather, uh, you know, continue living the same, the same life that you did? Um, and, you know, working towards, you know, a, 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 I guess a down-the-road goal like buying a sailboat? Or what if you could be free in the here and now and still, um, you know, yeah, what if you could be free in the here and now? I think that's, uh, that's what's most important. We don't, we don't have a whole lot of uh, time to live here on Earth. And uh, I don't know. Uh, too many people, no. I guess, kind of waste it uh, in that uh, 9 to 5 survival society slave job. So I don't know. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that, 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 that's what our, our friend Alma Summer did is, is like they lived in, was it like, like a Jeep? like a Jeep Cherokee or something like that. And then they got like the RV and then they, they had the kid and then they transitioned from like the RV. Now they're getting a sailboat, right? Because like, that's, that's what they want to do. It's, you don't have to like coerce yourself and, in, and, in, into living one lifestyle because like, that's, that's, that what's, that's what you choose to do. Like, uh, 
tastes change as we get older and, and, and as our mentality changes and our philosophy changes. Um, there's, there's so many options out there for, for self-liberation that you, you don't have to corner yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm somebody who used to be very big on, you know, trying to work with other people and trying to, end, you know, end the state. And, like, that was my main focus. It was trying to get as yeah. many people free as possible. But, you know, I, I've shifted gears over the past couple of years, and I'm, I'm mo- uh, so much more focused on the self-liberation thing and just being able to lead by example and just show mm-hmm. people what's possible. And, you know, Vanu, you know, when, when I remember, I mean, heck, I remember when Shane first, told me about Vanu even before the podcast started when we had him on the seed when we when you were on the seeds of liberty and you were talking about the fact that you were starting this podcast like ever since then I was just like well this fits in perfectly with the way I'm now thinking like this is this is almost too perfect like this is you know this really is you know I, I hate to say there you know there's obviously not just one path to freedom but this is one of the best that I've found yet and just getting out there and just mm-hmm. making yourself free right now. And, and you're right, Jason, you could do like, you know, what, what, what Alma is doing and a couple other people are doing, you know, split in time. Like, I think that's her goal. I haven't talked to her in a while, but I was pretty sure that was their goal. They wanted to do like six months on the sea, six mm-hmm. months on land. You know, that's that's totally doable. You know, even even just starting out small like I'm doing, you know, just doing this as an experiment. As long as you could secure a way to make some money along the way, which, again, is not difficult. I just haven't put a lot of effort into it because I've got so many other things going on. And I had a really big safety net that I'm kind of working off of right now. But I'm looking into doing that. I'm looking into transitioning to getting more work. And it's totally possible to fund yourself living this lifestyle and continue to plan for the future. So absolutely, I I think this is something that... Uh, you know, obviously more people are looking into and I hope even more continue to do so. You know, I, uh, I I'd love to see I'd love to see the day where there was even more abandoned homes because more people are just out on the road traveling. <laughs> yes, <laughs> B- yes. Bouncing I... from place to place and finding their freedom in the now. All right. yeah. yeah. And and this is this is this is not like a, it's it's not really a new concept by any means. Right. Vaughn is not something that we just happen to stumble across. Like people have for years and years and and thousands and thousands of years like the and the history of mankind itself is like it's nomadic right you 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 follow the weather you, you follow the herds or or whatever else this is just a a new updated version of of self-liberation of of, of living a a mobile lifestyle and not being stuck in one place and and only experiencing one thing right, right. It's easier than ever too yeah. massively easier than than mm-hmm. in the past like we, we oh, yeah. don't even know half of the people that have done like there's there's no record of it at least now it's it's proliferated and it's easier and there's more communication well, yeah, and yeah the, the, the time to do it is now it's even there's no excuse mm-hmm. to not at least try to experience it yeah the the technological advances now make it so much easier than 40 years ago when when rail wrote this stuff yeah, yeah, and you made you made a good uh, you made a good point looking back into into history that you know nomadic lifestyles were were kind of a thing for a while, and uh, I, I kind of see something similar with uh, you know with with this uh, with this urbanization. Um, there are a lot of people trying to you know return to the land. Rayo talked about this back in the 1960s, and uh, I, I mean mm-hmm. this is just another I guess another version, another I guess uh, another version of you know returning back to uh, you know when when life was simpler, uh, at least in in, in, some, in some sense. But to be fair, Jason, we did just stumble across mm-hmm. Vanu. Um, it was a completely well, yeah, random thing. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yes, I do. I yeah. Do. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess yeah. uh, I'll I'll just toss out. Uh, I've said this many times, but I, it's 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 really really worth reiterating. Um, you know, a, a lot of these things can seem like they're like if if you're working towards one of these lifestyle changes, it it can seem really really far away. Um, can it, it, it can yeah, it can seem really far away and it can get disheartening at times. But what you can do right now that would that will se- severe I guess really really incredibly help you towards this goal is finding location independence. Uh, you know, work, mm-hmm. uh, or you know, just uh, intensively saving so that you're you're you're. I guess uh, if you hit the road as a van nomad, you've got a couple a couple of years of savings so you can get used to the lifestyle and then worry about money in the second year or something along those lines. Um, and thankfully, I've got the location independent work now. Thanks, Jeremy. Appreciate that, bud. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had him. Uh, oh, did yeah. you, oh, did you get that job? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so no problem. Ho- hopefully, they yeah, that woman uh, would. That woman would not leave me alone. Yeah. She just kept asking me more and more questions. I'm like, I thought I was done here. What are we doing? Yeah, I, I had a bullshit job reference for me. Um, <laughs> that's, that's okay. 
<laughs> what are what are friends for, brother? You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it it wasn't it, it wasn't like I was completely lying. You and I have worked together on a number of different projects over the past couple of years, so it's not like I was. You know, it wasn't like I was completely lying. Right. It's not I like had... I paid you for any of it, but we worked together. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Ben helped me out too, by the way. I had to, I had to put him down. <laughs> so yeah, Ben and Jeremy helped me get this uh, location independent job, which is kind of fitting, at least in a sense, because yeah, that's that's it's that's incredible. Because uh, yeah, this is a mobile job. I can work from anywhere. I can work from absolutely anywhere. So except except for California, apparently. Yes, except for California and a few other states, but I don't want to go to the states anyways. Um. <laughs> oh man. So, yeah, I guess I, I don't really I don't really have anything else. Uh, I, I guess uh, Jeremy, uh, any any uh, closing thoughts for listeners here? I guess we've been going on for uh, for probably almost uh, an hour and a half, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah. About that. Yeah, I guess uh, Jeremy, any any closing thoughts uh, for for the listeners here? Um, I mean. <laughs> Not really. Like I said, I mean, I think I said it all before. Just I, I really encourage people to try this. It's it's not as scary as it may as it may seem. Uh, I mean, like I said, obviously, if you if you're lucky enough, lucky enough like me, like you have a little bit of a safety net, it makes it a little bit easier. But, you know, there are I mean, we've talked about the fact that the you know, the anarchist community has been extremely helpful and will be extremely helpful to people like us. Mm-hmm. But, you know, especially if you're somebody who's stuck in a major anywhere and you're miserable with your life and you're miserable with the people around you when you start traveling you really do realize that not as many people suck as you thought they did like i've run into just so many nice people and not even just i mean i i still large i mean i was saying this earlier when i was i was hanging out with the cunnigans um that you know i still largely hate people but i can't i, I only say that like half seriously now because i just meet so many nice people out on the road and uh, that are willing to help out with things like they see something going wrong. Oh, can I can I give you a hand? Um, do you need something? You know, it's like it's uh, the, the, the possibilities are endless out here. And, uh, you know, if you're even if you're thinking of think, thinking that you're going to go with this alone, you're almost never going to be alone, man. You're You're going to find people out here that are uh, just, you know, really nice people that are willing to you know do things for you, help you out and uh, even put you up sometimes, you know. And, even, uh, even as statists, man. Even as statists. Well, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I've got, I, I've gotten a lot of, I've talked to a lot of, you know, status normies, whatever you want to call them, throughout these travels because, you know, I'll, you know, somebody will strike up a conversation with me at a gas station somewhere or, or at a campsite somewhere, and when they find out that I'm living out of my vehicle, they have all these questions, right. and 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 it's not like they're not looking down on me because, but they're they're honestly curious. And I've had a couple of people walk away from me going, wow, I've never considered this. That sounds kind of cool. You know, I, we, I, because, actually, Shane, I don't even know if you're aware of this, but because of you and me, Lou Fien is actually considering doing this now. Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. He has gotten so enamored with our stories that he's like, he's considering um, selling the house that he just purchased, so, um, trading in his Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's Kepper. And, uh, it just takes a little while out here to like get your ba- figure out where you're going and then uh you just run with it, man. So so Jeremy, it cut out there for a moment. You said that Lou's considering selling his house and then it cut off. Oh, sorry, yeah. He's considering selling his house that he just bought two years ago, uh trading in his camper for something smaller and getting out on the road like we are. Okay, awesome. Wow. Because it's like it's infectious. Like well, that's what the happened? way you gotta put it. What would happen to the assault kitchen? Oh, he would bring that with him. Be with him, okay, all the time. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) he would have the assault kitchen with him wherever he goes. It would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, That's that's, that's great great to hear. And and yeah, I mean, that's honestly like, like, especially with uh, you know middle class lifestyles like I was, you know, raised in. um, I never saw this as a like I never even thought thought of this as a possibility. You know, cars were for traveling from point A to point B. Like that's the all I really thought about it. So it's not surprising that a lot of folks in the survival society just have never thought of this as an option, um, except for places uh, like uh, I think Seattle is one of them where you know the the, the homeless situation is so bad that it's uh, and and the the homeless people are so, like it's the the van nomads there are I guess so rude 
um, and they leave their trash everywhere, and it's not good. Um, but uh, but generally speaking, you know, for for normal individuals, I mean, a lot of them, a lot of them probably really have never thought of this as an option. So um, it's great, like from, that you've had experience with this, that they're asking all these questions because they're naturally curious about, huh, living out of your car, I, I could I could live out of that. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that. So I mean, that's that's really great to hear, man. Yeah, it's it's like like I said, I I meet people every day that are just. Either they're doing it, they're thinking about doing it, or hearing about people like us is making them reconsider their entire life, their entire life path. And why, you know, why am I wasting this? Why am I wasting my life and my money on this stuff that I that doesn't actually even make me happy in the end? You know, like do do I miss having certain conveniences? Sure, but I'm learning to overcome that. And uh, you know, like I said, and I'll keep saying. It's really, really freeing to be out here, man. And uh, especially where I, from where I came from, you know, that was the one other thing that I've really noticed. Um, and even, even driving through the commie state of Illinois, um, I have seen so many less cops since I've been out here. <laughs> I, dro- I drove through most of the state of Minnesota, like cutting across it and then cutting north and then cutting back down and then cutting, uh, cutting up north through it again. So I threw, drove through a decent portion of the state of Minnesota. I think I saw two cops the entire time. Hey, we call them bludgies on this podcast, sir. Well, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot where I was for a minute. My apologies. <laughs> They're not even out anymore, man. It's great. Yeah, you could be free, man. You could be free. You could be free. Just get away from the cities. You'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and, and I mean, you and honestly, I mean, with uh, like a, a lot of van nomads will just find, uh, you know, wilderness, they'll stay in wilderness spots every single night. They may drive a couple hours to, to different, uh, you know, camping locations out and out in the r- literally out in the wilderness. Have you have you really even done that yet? I know you uh, you went uh, uh, out. Uh, you stayed with uh, with Lou somewhere in Bear Saskatchewan. Um, but uh, have you really have you uh, even gotten to some of these, uh, you know, one, once in a lifetime sort of uh, sort of, uh, uh, I guess, places? Uh, well, I don't know about once in a well, lifetime, once in a lifetime but, I mean, but you know what when I, mean. I when I met. Yeah, but what, well, what I I mean, we, we the, the the place that I met up with the wandering agorist was literally called the Dunes Wilderness, <laughs> um, and it's a it's a it's a, like a subsection of one of the national parks out there that's literally just wilderness wilderness area, and you're camping out in the woods. Um, a couple weeks back, Murder Dog and I were in the uh, Mo Shannon State Forest in Pennsylvania, and again, there's no campsites out there. You're just out in the woods camping, you know, with, you know, with wildlife all around you. So I've done a little bit of that and I'd like to do more um, because it was kind of uh, it was it was it was ridiculously peaceful and kind of exhilarating, Mm -hmm. you know, to be out there. And 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 instead of having to worry about somebody coming and jacking your car, you got to worry about a bear coming up on you. (laughs) It makes it interesting. See, it makes it interesting, man. <laughs> of, of, of all the things I worry about on a daily basis living in San Francisco Bay Area, I would have happily trade that for worrying about a bear. Or, exactly. Or See, that's raccoons. what I'm talking about, man. I mean, yeah, I, I've lived most of my life on Long Island, which, you know, it's not crime ridden. But, yeah, you got to worry about people walking by and, you know, breaking into your stuff mm-hmm. out in the woods. Yeah, you got to worry about animals breaking into your stuff if you're stupid and you leave your food outside. But. Yeah, man, I, I'm with you, Jason. I, I I already did trade it, and I'll do it. I'll do it any damn day. I'll trade. I'll trade. I'll trade that fear. I'll trade that fear for the other fear any day of the week. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't say I've ever had to worry about bears. Not anywhere I've lived. Nope. Definitely have not. So, uh, yeah, I guess we can we can begin to close out unless you guys have anything else you want to chat about. No, I don't have anything else. No, I was I I can get into uh, train hoppers and stuff. That that's a whole other era of 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 traveling freely. Oh hey, there's a uh, there's a really great. I mean, I've watched all the Nomad documentaries on YouTube. There's one I think it's called American Nomad, um, and that focuses more. I'm not even sure there might be one van, one or two Van Nomads that are interviewed there, but that's actually like what you're talking about, where they get their their you know uh, I guess uh, yeah. backpackers or uh, you know they they ride trains and such. I mean yeah, there uh, and there's actually one guy who I uh, you know briefly chatted with. Uh, he bought a van and was converting it. And, uh, you know, he changed his mind really quick, sold the van and decided he was going to hitchhike to California from like New York or right. somewhere. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, like, there's... well, have you seen, have right. you seen this in other countries, like in Europe and stuff? There's, uh, there's, there's a guy, well, he, he's got YouTube videos, but he does this whole series called illegal freedom. It's absolutely awesome. You should definitely check it out. Illegal freedom. I like that. 
I like that. Yeah. He's, uh, his name is Shie, S-H-I-E-Y. But uh, I'll, I'll send you a link or something. You should definitely watch it. It's very interesting because I think he's Russian or Ukrainian or something. But he travels all across Europe and climbs. He's one of those guys that climbs with a GoPro and has the crazy views and goes way beyond just normal exploration of the roads or whatever. He goes everywhere. Nice. It's 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 really interesting because he's he, he's also free, he's free from society. He's free from one location and he's free from the fear. Right. Of of all these out of reach places. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, that's that sounds awesome. That sounds really awesome. But uh, I guess uh, one one final note I make is that uh, this isn't just uh, a United States thing. Uh, Carl said, uh, you know, in Australia it's small but it's growing. Um, in Europe, it's uh, I, I from from just watching some of, some of his posts on Instagram, it seems like mm-hmm. this is uh, this is uh, this is a thing in Europe as well. And uh, even in some of the Van Nomad groups, I've seen people posting pictures like uh, traveling across Iran. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> I don't know if I'm pretty sure I travel out of that country, but, but hey, you know, hey, Van Nomads and I are fine. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> know, man. Fine. As, long as, you, as, I was, as, I was, as long as you can dodge the bombs, yeah. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that could be a problem. But, yeah, I'm with Bodie on that one. With the, what the American perception of what Iran actually is, is, is from what I've learned from talking to people who are from, from over there, it's wildly different than what, we're, what is perceived to be here. It's not, very, it's not actually dangerous. There's a lot of really cool people out there. And it may, I mean, you, you, you may have to deal with the heat a little bit. But other than that, it's, uh, it's actually, it, it seems like it'd actually be kind of a cool place. I, if I was ever to make it over that way, I would definitely try this through Iran. Why the heck not? Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a good, that's a fair point. That's a fair point, yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good, guys. Very good. So, uh, so Jeremy, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell the listeners where they can find, uh, where they can, uh, find your work and, and, and follow your journey. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for anybody who wants to follow along with the craziness that I'm enduring, uh, the easiest place to find all my stuff is at steamit.com slash at abolitionist J. Um, I, I mean, I do a bunch of other podcasts and stuff. They've kind of been put on hi- hiatus for the mo- for the time being. Um, but I am trying to put out daily vlogs and, and or like little videos and stuff like that. And uh, just keep a lo- people abreast of not only what I'm doing, but again, what's possible out here. So yeah, steamit.com slash at abolitionist J is the best place to find all my stuff. Right on, right on. And uh, Bodie, why don't you tell listeners uh, where they can find you? And uh, I think you've got uh, a Threadless story Ooh. and such. Uh, go ahead and plug. plug yeah. Away. All right, I'll plug away. Well, for all my Steamit stuff, it's kind of all over the place, but it's um, at Bodie.agora. Or is it? I think it's Bodie.agora. Yeah, it is Bodie.agora. Yeah. So that's my Steamit. Um my YouTube is, I know you don't want to promote YouTube, but it's uh, radiogora.net will bring you there. That's more of my experimental stuff. And then I have agora.threadless.com, which is pretty much all of my t-shirt designs and stuff like that. I think I'm going to do a, a a nomadic inspired design after this talk. I, I don't know. You need to. I think I'd, it might be I'd interesting. Buy it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. And if so, you, if you need someone to uh, just, just shut up and take my bit, just shut up and take my Bitcoin, Bodie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you if you need any uh, Photoshop work done or anything, definitely get in contact uh, with Bodie or uh, or Andrew, whatever. Yeah. Or Andrew Marriott yeah. on, on Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Get in, get in contact with him. He actually did the uh, cover photo for my book, um, Vanu: A Strategy for Self Liberation, which you can pre-order by going to libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu books. <laughs> so uh, once you take a look at that and you realize how beautiful it is, yeah, he's the one that uh, that put that together. So yeah, thanks again for that, man. Yeah, no problem, man. That was awesome. Yeah, so, Bo- I, love Bo- doing, I love doing that stuff. Bo- Bodie's done my logos too. My, uh, our Seeds of Liberty logo and my personal meme cast logo, I, which I love. I, ever so I much. love. I love seeing it on memes people have stolen. I know that's that always, that always that, it always makes me it makes me smile too. I'm like, oh look, we're, our stuff's getting shared everywhere. <laughs> it's fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me, guys. This was uh, a, definitely, yeah, uh, uh, definitely a lot of fun. So this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu. Obviously, as I've said, there are a bunch of great titles on there, but Get Going Mobile, a terrific video and band live scene from the 1960s, narrated by yours truly. Again, lots of uh, articles by Rayo, and we've been talking about nomadism, this, or I guess fan nomadism this entire time, basically. Uh, yeah, some great articles on uh, by Rayo. You can get, a, you can, uh, I guess, uh, not in the audiobook version, but uh, if you get the book, you can... Uh, you can uh, act definitely uh, check out the way that uh, his van was laid out and all the amenities that he had. Uh, so, again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu. 
And uh, like I said, my book, Bonding Strategy for Self-Liberation, libertyandertack.com forward slash book.